And that's cinematography. <laughs> Hi, my name is Valentina V, and today we are in a set. No, it's actually just a boring apartment. The whole reason is because I want to show you how to take something that looks boring and make it look epic. All right, let's get it. I'm ready. I'm excited. Let's go. I really wanted to do this episode because when I was starting out, I feel like I walked into a space and I didn't really know how to cover it. And I sort of took everything as is. So the first step is what's on the page? What are we actually shooting? We are shooting a husband who is coming to his wife on the couch and giving her a surprise breakfast. So what do we need? We need a couch, we need breakfast, and we need two people. I have a couch here and it's against the wall and we have two people. The husband is going to walk in from the side and action, coming in with the breakfast. Well, immediately I see a couple of things wrong with this. It's kind of bland, right? There is nothing on the walls. There's no depth. Usually couches are along walls, but you don't have to put them along the wall. Third of all, how am I doing coverage to this? Okay, think about if I come over here and I'm doing coverage of her, it's just like a blown out window in the back and I'm just shooting into another beige wall. What do you want with beige? You want to either cover it or you want to find a different colored wall. Maybe kind of like that. Already, it's a lot better because we have them farther away from the wall, which means that there's more depth happening. It's a different color and it's broken up on the side there. So if we maybe put some more production design into it, maybe we put in a lamp next to the plant and then action you come in very cute so already there's a little bit more depth also with this room open on the left there's even more depth because you can see into the bathroom but we can make it better i'm not taking advantage of the beautiful ceilings that are over here number two there's no motivation that he's walking from he's cooking breakfast i'd like to see it and giving motivation to our characters and go into this room instead what's cool about this entire house is that it does have depth if you know where to look for it. We can move the couch away from the wall. If you turn completely around, you'll start to see that this is where the depth lies in the apartment. So now we have a shot that is dynamic. We can also see his motivation, where he is, what he's coming to. First thing, story, right? Second, blocking. Third, composition. Fourth, lighting because we are shooting in a house. Mm. What are some things that you should probably be aware of before you bring a film crew to your house? Logistically, when you're filming, you're bringing someone to your, to your spot. So the biggest thing is, what's the parking situation like? Are you filming in a metropolitan area where you need to rent a garage? Are you filming in the countryside where there's tons of parking? Anytime you bring a production into your home, you really have to think about where are you staging all these departments? So we have the glam department, which is hair, makeup, wardrobe. Where are you staging camera? G&E, art department, and more importantly, crafty and lunch. The most important thing to remember is you have to feed people well. You have to have crafty, you have to have water, mm -hmm. uh, coffee, and good lunch um, because people will forgive a lot, but they will not forgive bad food. Here we have an Ari Alexa Mini with a Zeiss 21 millimeter CP3 prime on it. I wanted the widest that we could possibly get. I'm really trying to shoot wider nowadays because I think shooting wider, number one, is more challenging. And number two, when you have a good location like this, um, you can really show off the space. I wanted the Black Promist because this is supposed to be like a very like dewy, romantic, soft, warm morning and nothing says soft quite like literally softening the image. We're also gonna haze the room. I see you there in the comments telling me why do you always use haze for everything? I don't use haze for everything, okay? Only every other time. We are here with Jorge RCLT and we want this lighting to be a little bit more than just like a simple soft front light. Well, we are starting with our base like ambient, which is going to be like a 600 bounce in two of A by must. And then we're going to book it with our half grid. A lot of times what you want to do is if you have not a ton of room to say have like two layers of diffusion in front of a light 
or you can't really like mount a light as high up as you want to, you use a book light technique. So what are we doing with these branches? And then what are we doing with this contraption out there? We also wanted to have some sort of hard cut coming in, into this room. And what we had is a 600D with the Fresnel lens on it. And we're pushing it through a four by Camonet. It's made out of, what kind of fabric is this? It's, uh, basically, this is kind of like what they use in the military to hide stuff in the jungle. <laughs> if it was just this, it's nice, it's soft, but it doesn't really exist in the real world and it just doesn't look interesting. So that's why we're adding that second light. It's a hard light. And then we have some other natural elements to help break it up. Like Branchaloris. Branchaloris. Is that, yes. did you come up with that or is that a thing? No, no, it's a thing. A Branchaloris? Yeah. So it's like Cucaloris, yeah. but with we a branch. Made branches, yeah. So in order to have some negative fill on this side, negative fill means no light, right? This is fill, this is negative fill. We have a wag flag here on this side and up top, you may think that this is some sort of duvetine or visqueen. This is actually a uh, tablecloth that one might be able to get at any party supply store. What's great about it is that um, it's very lightweight, right? So even if it were to fall, it wouldn't hurt anyone. And we are NDing the windows in the back there so that they don't blow out too much. We put an ND6 on this window to cut two stops of light coming in so it doesn't look blown out on camera. I'm using Gorilla Tape at the very edges of it, outside whatever wood paint it is so we don't take off the paint when it come out. Yeah, so the Gorilla Tape is just really for the bottom and top here. And then what kind of tape are we putting here? Uh, photo black, like any paper tape that won't take a paint when you pull it out. Now, if you are on say like the second floor, the sixth floor, what you would normally do is you would cut this to the size and then put it on the inside, not with tape, but if it's uh, like a self stick, you can do it like that or you can do it with Windex and a squeegee. There's ways to do it. As an experiment, can we put it up higher and then just angle it low? So right now we are trying to get like the sun to be coming through the background, not through these two windows, but through that one. So this is our sun, it's our 300D, but we don't want it to really ping on the ceiling because the ceiling makes it look like the sun is very low. It gives it away that it's not a sun. I also wanna use these blinds right here as a kookaloris, as a cookie. If you don't wanna send something through a window, say that your light isn't powerful enough to be sent through a window, bring it on inside, take the blinds off, and then just hang the blinds in front of your light. Because this is you know, a rented property, I don't wanna mess with their blinds, so we're actually using them on the window itself. And then put the, the top barn door down Yep, yep, there you go. So now we have, basically we have this blinds pattern on this wall, so it's a little bit more interesting than nothing. Uh, and it's not on the ceiling and it's not on that wall. We got it. We're doing some final adjustments to the lighting here. And right now I'm metering her face and his face because at their A spot, I want them to be at kind of the same level. So what I'm using right here is a Siconic light meter and I'm using the spot the reflected light. So when I meter her face, it's at a four when I meter his It's at a two eight. So we're gonna have to bring in a black flag to knock it off of her So it's only on him at his a spot if you don't have one of these another way to do it is Through your monitors false colors. So if you turn on false color view on your monitor, you'll be able to see What's brighter? What's darker? Yeah, it looks like a nice Morning. Gosh, I'd like to have this morning. All right, this looks great, guys. Let's shoot it. Cute. And cut. Whenever I punch into close-ups from wides, I like to sweeten those close-ups up. In this case, I wanted to add a little bit of a backlight. I know it didn't exist in the wide, okay? If you watch your favorite TV shows and movies, you'll see the exact same thing. It doesn't exist in the wide, it exists in the close-up. It just makes it look nicer, it pops it out from the background. So we have a 60D here and it has some full soft frost on it. This is helping to just make it a lot softer and not as like, intense and then the other thing we did is remember that uh, 600d that was over here that was on ian's face well now it's gone because we never see him at his a spot here in this close-up and now what we're doing is we're bringing this four by of opal a little bit closer to her 
and we're bringing the, the Branchalorus closer as well. This is a very common technique. It's called soft face, hard body. So we're making her face very, very soft, very beautiful. And then the light across her body is gonna be that harder light. But because we don't want it to be like that pure, single, sourcey looking light, we're breaking it up with this branch, just like before. Sometimes you wanna keep the effect that a Kukulorus or a Branchalorus in this case gives you, that dappled effect, but you also don't want there to be as much light. You want it to be a little bit softer, but not lose this. So something like an Opal or a 216 is going to break down the light, make it so soft that the effect of this will not be felt at all. And in that case, you can put a net in front of it. So this is a double, and as you can see, it doesn't diffuse the light so much as it knocks off stops of exposure. So in this case, the face was very soft. However, the body was very punchy and very hard. So put a net in front of it. Oh, this is actually really pretty. Okay, this actually really works. I like this composition. And action. That looks so good, everybody. That's a wrap! Good job, good job. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it wasn't like as flashy as a spaceship or a high rise or even a restaurant, but hey, everyone's gotta live somewhere, right? Even if it's in a boring apartment. Hopefully you learned how to add depth to your images, how to use foreground, middle ground, background. A lot of it is about composition and production design. Which leads me to my question for this video. What is a hack that you use to turn a boring location more cinematic, whatever that means. Write it in the comments for your chance to win an Aperture MC. My name is Valentina. If you wanna follow me on social media, my links are down below, but please also, if you liked this video, seriously give it a like, like an actual click the like button and subscribe to this channel. We would really appreciate that so more people can learn and more people can see it. All right, till next time, happy shooting. This is why it takes so long. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely get me fixing my wig. <laughs> That's real. That's real helpful. <laughs>